Hi, I'm John Trinkle. I'm the chief scientist at TubeMogul, and we're in online video advertising. Now, machine learning is something that we use in practice to take the large amount of data we have about users, about auctions, and try to do really four major things. Uh, that is optimizing the metrics that our clients care about, so clicks, conversions, and so forth, to make sure that they get the kind of engagement they expect to see in their campaigns. Uh, we also try to construct uh, large-scale uh, segments for demographics, that would be age, gender, and potentially income and other kinds of things for which we can get some uh, semblance of ground truth. And those are utilized, obviously, to target the demographic that our clients expect to see for the ads they run on whatever, uh, whatever media. Uh, we also, of course, uh, try to endeavor to completely understand and mitigate any fraud that's going through at an auction level so that our clients never are, are uh, plagued by bots and so forth. They're just getting the real users. And thirdly, uh, a big emphasis in our arena these days is to actually focus on using machine learning to uh, understand that users are the same users across different media, uh, for example, mobile and desktop, so that we believe uh, with some probability that two users are the same, we actually can pursue them uh, relative to um, incrementally increasing reach across different platforms or actually uh, enabling, uh, say, an advertiser to frequency cap or distribute their campaigns across those, those media to best suit their campaigns that they're running. Machine learning can really improve personalization for marketers. And again, we emphasize always you know, anonymized, non-specific. Non but in that context, and anonymized, we can do a lot by virtue of the fact that in our data stream of which we see 50 billion auctions a day, we can understand a great deal about what users do, their behavior, their affinities, uh, the kind of sites they like to go to. And in that context, we really can characterize strongly what users really have an affinity for, uh, what they uh, what things correlate to demographic segments, or de their demographic um, age and gender buckets. Uh, um, we can leverage that data to really characterize users. And, and recently we've been doing a lot of work in uh, an arena called Word Embedding, in which we can actually characterize users by what we call a compact distributed representation of that user. And in that context, we can do very strong look-alike models, and that would be any bank of users that you have. We can actually expand that out to uh, capture like users in, uh, in desktop or mobile. Uh, we can actually use it to do better prediction at runtime because these uh, concise signatures can be available at runtime. They're so small, they can be distributed with low latency. Uh, we can dynamically characterize them there. We can uh, also uh, uh, determine whether uh, users uh, may be bots. I mean, this is also a big issue always, but uh, they may be bots relative to their behavior and the way they behave. An interesting aspect here is that because we have such a tight uh, representation of the user's likes and dislikes, we could actually potentially find those uh, circumstances of fraud where it's actually a zombie user and they're using, uh, being used at a low and slow level to capture one-off things that are completely incongruous what they would normally do, and so that would allow us to do something that nobody's really tackled, and that is filter those things that are a true user, but a, a, a fraudulent interaction. Uh, so that's a very big deal relative to how we can represent users. And, and finally, again, this notion of a rich representation of uh, each user across different media would allow us to have a, a leg up on the approaches that one usually takes relative to fingerprints that in, in, uh, entail uh, IP, or user agent string and so forth to a level where we're actually gauging and disentangling the, the members of a different household relative to the predilections of uh, one of the, uh, a child in the family using a shared desktop versus the adults and further break down from a household level to an individual level how well we might target those users that are, that are out there that we see in auctions. So it's a, it's a wealth of things that we can do on personalization and, and all that uh, in, a, in a fashion that can be more and more towards auction level appraisal as opposed to sort of offline or cached results. So in, in many ways, we're able to take this data, and because there's so much of it, we can really crunch it up, if you will, and have that available to really do comparisons that uh, previously were so arduous and time consuming they had to be done offline. Now they can be done there on the fly and allow one to personalize, not only expand personalization, but I'd say speed up and make amenable to greater and greater reach the personalization information we have for users.